911. Is this a hoax or is there truly? No, it's, it's true. And if you see anything, stay indoors. Remain indoors. Don't try to approach them or don't try to detain them. On the 18th of October, 2011, one American town became engulfed in a bizarre and tragic event. I'm in desperate need here of some help. These things are completely crazy, half domesticated, half wild. Stay inside. This is the story of what happened that night in Zanesville, Ohio, when one man's obsession with exotic and dangerous animals left his community with dozens and dozens of deadly carnivores on the loose. We are not talking about your normal, everyday house cat. These are 300 pound Bengal tigers. Lions and tigers and bears roaming the area. We've got a bear on the interstate, bear on the interstate. Two more African lions, one is wounded roaming the property. It's complete chaos out there. We've got officers going in heavily armed and now it's all snowballed into hell. The local sheriff's department found itself at the center of a news story that sparked international outrage. Stop shooting animals! You guys are outrageous! If you know, don't f mine! Well, right now we're shooting to kill. Tigers and bears and wolves and cheetahs and leopards and you name it, and it's loose. <laughs> What kind of guy hoards more than 50 exotic animals on his farm? And why would he suddenly set all of them free? Dozens of dangerous carnivores, lions, tigers, and bears let loose on his unsuspecting neighbors. Hi, I'm Jeff Rawson. Each week here on Maximum Drama, we'll bring you a remarkable true story that plays out like a movie. In this episode, it's the bizarre story of the Zanesville, Ohio animal massacre. Did they all have to die, or could some of these endangered animals been saved? Decide for yourself when you hear the facts for the first time revealed by the very deputies who had to hunt down each and every animal. Here's Act One of Shoot to Kill. I can still remember the day I got a call to go to a property and the call was a camel was eating a lady's tree. And when I got the call, I was somewhat skeptical that it was really going to be a camel eating a tree. And when I got to the location, this older gentleman stopped in a pickup truck and uh, yelled at me. He said, hey, deputy, are you looking for the owner of that camel? And I said, yes. And he said, Terry Thompson. And if you go there, be careful because he has lions and bears. Harry Thompson lived on his farm in rural Ohio, along with 56 exotic pets. Well, the lions would be roaring probably when they wanted to eat. You'd hear them every day, maybe in the morning and maybe at night. Basically, in the summertime, for outside, you could just hear them really roaring. And I said, well, I hope they're not that hungry. <laughs> In his hometown, Terry was known as a man who walked on the wild side. Terry used to own a Harley Davidson dealership in the Zanesville area, but he also was licensed to deal in class three weapons. Class three weapons are automatic weapons. So that was the only Harley Davidson dealer you can get a Harley Davidson and a submachine gun at the same time. Terry was known as an absolute thrill-seeking daredevil. I remember him flying his airplane inappropriately, too low, too fast. Of course, he flew his plane under the Veterans Bridge in Zanesville, which there's not much clearance between the river and the bridge. Zanesville, Ohio is not the sort of place you normally associate with bizarre events. Appalachian, Ohio is what we call Zanesville. Small population, hometown, people, 
everyone knows everyone for the most part. But on October 18, 2011, Zanesville, Ohio briefly became one of the most dangerous places in America. It all started around 5 p.m. when Terry's next door neighbor, Sam Kopchak, noticed his horse, Red, acting strangely. Red was eating grass just like he is now. And all of a sudden, he took off. Red took off up over the hill. Well, he wasn't running from me. I don't, didn't know what he was running to or from. And so I went through the gate. And I looked, and he went all the way up to the corner where the fence comes together. And when I got to about right in here, I could see more of the horses, and they were going around and around in a circle. And horses don't do that unless something's going on. You know, something's not right. I could see something was in the circle of the horses. I saw a black figure. What was this black figure? The black figure was a bear. So I said, well, I'm going to get red and take him to the barn. And we got about right here, and I felt something's not right. I feel like something's looking at me. We got about right here in this area. I know because this small tree that's right here, it's a locust tree. The lion was sitting right there, right up against the fence. A male African lion, huge animal. He could have hopped over the fence and been on us and just snapping the finger. My first thought was, dial 911. And I said, well, I want my mom to know what's going on. My mother was in our living room of our house, sitting watching TV when I called her. He said, we got big problems. He said, there's a, he said, I know there's a bear loose. It's up there with the horses and there's a full grown lion. And so he told me to call somebody. Yeah, this is Mr. Kopchak on Kopchak Road, and we live next to Terry Thompson, and there's a bear and a lion out. There's a bear and a lion out? Yeah, right up, up behind us. And it's behind your house? Pardon me? Is it behind your house? Is it behind your house? Yeah, and they're chasing Terry horses. It was pretty common to get called out at Terry Thompson's. <laughs> Deputies had been called out to deal with Terry's animals over 20 times in the previous seven years. Terry's collection of animals began with horses, which he trained with his wife, Marion. Terry and Marion were always very happy together. She was always willing to do whatever he was into at the moment. She would be into it, too. They chose not to have children. And so he told me, he said, we decide not to have kids, we're just going to have animals. He said, I don't want to bring any kids into this world. Over the years, Terry and Marion's choice of pets became more adventurous and more dangerous. In the state of Ohio, most creatures, great and small, could be bought legally. I met Marion and Terry at an exotic animal auction. I believe Terry bought a lion, a baby lion. And um, that's when I first met them, because they asked me a lot of questions on how to raise it and what to do. I said, what in the hell do you want that thing for, man? I said, it's going to eat your horses. <laughs> that's the first thing I told him. Ohio was one of seven states in America with few, if any, restrictions on the ownership of exotic pets. Terry Thompson was allowed to collect as many dangerous animals as he wanted. He had one lion, and the next thing you know, there was five, then there was ten. It was just, I don't know where he found them all. I have no idea. As you can see in this bizarre online photograph, Terry would sometimes ride with his creatures uncaged. I know this whole personality drew him to those things because he had to prove he had more guts than anybody else. Who else had large cats and bears, and who else raised them in their house? Nobody that I know of. But T had more guts. Now I got one more. Now I got one more. Now I got one more. I got more than you. I got more than you. I got more than you. 
I was always concerned that we had a public safety issue. Terry and Marion had so many animals that were dangerous, lions, tigers, bears. I told Terry and Marion more than once that I really thought something bad was going to happen out there. <laughs> I pulled up over to the right there. There was a lion lying down in the grass. Here to the left, there was a black bear. And I remember I thought that bear could get out of that any time it wanted to. There's a lock on the gate, so I'm guessing nobody's home. If you haven't already done so, see if we have any phone numbers for Terry Thompson, see if we can get hold of him. The first thing I thought of was, okay, this is bad, but it's manageable. Hello, please leave a message after the tone. Hi, Terry, this is the sheriff's office. We were trying to get a hold of you. There's a bear and a lion running loose down there by your house. Give us a call. We'll find Terry, get the animals back in. I'll finish my coffee and go on with my chef, but it wasn't to be. The Muskingum County Sheriff's Department had endured a long and often fractious relationship with Terry Thompson. I was assigned to investigate Terry's animals at least four separate occasions. In 2010, Detective Welker led a team of officers and animal welfare experts to inspect the Thompson cages. How are they doing? Well, we got straw on all their stalls. We got uh, we got straw on all their stalls. We water them every day. We feed them every day. That's all we can do. Bless your dog. What do you want me to do? You want to do that? Terry was not always happy to see us. Are we allowed to take your picture with my camera? Yeah. Terry was a Vietnam veteran. Now, don't worry about this showing up on the computer because I don't have one. He had served his time in Vietnam and he couldn't believe that the police would be telling him how fast to drive his boat, or how low to fly his airplane, or how many wild animals he could have. It was actually very bizarre to be up close to more wild animals than you can go to the Columbus Zoo and see. Despite the troubling findings of the inspection, the sheriff's department was powerless to enforce changes or bring charges. Fifteen minutes after the first emergency call from Mrs. Kopchak, the sheriff's department was in the dark about how many animals were loose or how they got out. For deputies arriving on the scene, perhaps the answer lay inside the property. Somebody had to get up there and try to find out what was going on. I lifted the gate, drove up the, the road, goes that way, and then goes to the right. Well, I got close to the house. There were just animals just all around. There were, there were tigers, there were bears, there were lions, I mean, just, just everywhere. I could see the doors on the cages were open. This, this is, this can't be happening. Traffic, reference, Coke Tech Road. Everything has gone now. Terry Thompson got bears out, lions out, and then now is all snowballed into hell. 
for me, I knew that we had a serious issue because if these animals were out, they were out of control because all Terry had to control them were the pens. All his animals, to my knowledge, are inside this large fence. Yeah. However, the large fence that I'm calling large is four-foot exterior fence, which for a tiger is nothing. I told my partner, I said, we've got to call the wild. Hi, this is Dr. Wolf from the wild. With a potential 56 animals now free, officers turn to vets from the local zoo for advice and counsel. I'm sure you're familiar with Terry Thompson's animals. Yes. Okay, I need someone with a tranquilizer gun. Oh, man. Wow. You know, this is always a possibility, but who would think that this would actually happen? Hang on. All okay. of Terry Thompson's animals are loose right now. Wait, All of Terry Thompson's animals are loose. Really? Yeah. Um, all of them? We're going to send guns down there? We all just started moving. As I was driving to Zanesville, I was thinking about the fact that we train for emergency situations in zoos all the time. But when we train for these situations, we're usually thinking about one animal in a, in a really extreme situation, maybe two, three, or four. But I had never considered what it would be like to try to contain 30, 40, 50 animals. This is the Thompson property. You can see that it's approximately 300 yards from the interstate. It's a very close proximity to town. Here is the farm, and here is the closest school, which is two miles. The vet's journey to Zanesville would take an hour. Facing an immediate public safety emergency, the sheriff of Muskingum County made a decision. On the way to the scene, I made it clear to the guys on the scene that if there were any animals um, outside the pasture field or looking like they were going out of the fence, they were to be put down. Put the word out. If it's close to the fence, and it looks like it's coming over, I don't want it out. I searched the house. I didn't find Terry. I thought, well, nothing else we can do up here. And I started down the drive, and a little ways from the house, were some of the animal cages. And there was what I assumed to be a dead body down there in front of the cages. He was lying on his back, and to his left, there was some kind of an object, which I, I couldn't tell for sure, but it looked like a pistol. I had to assume that it was Terry Thompson. We have located the owner, code 16, here in the field. I can remember feeling, oh, holy hell. Up to that point, we could always rely on Terry to help us get the animals contained. But at that point, when I thought, this is really, really bad, because we're on our own now. The vets were still many miles away from the Thompson farm, where dozens of animals were still on the loose. Meanwhile, Terry Thompson's body lay in the open. The sheriff called for backup closer to home. You know, as soon as I got in the call that night, I came home immediately and got dressed and headed out to my car so I could respond to the scene. We keep all of our gear in our cars and I know where my weapon system is. And as soon as you hit my trunk, this is what you see. This is a Remington 700 308. Has a loophole of three and a half by 10 power scope on it. This is our weapon of choice as a sniper for the Skin County Special Response Team. This is an HAMP5 9 millimeter. Uh, this weapon has a single burst. It also has a three round burst. and also full auto. All those were used that night of this incident. This is the AR-15. This weapon was not designed specifically for Tigers, uh, but on that night it was designated for it. It's still complete chaos out there. We've got officers going in heavily armed. We have 
a crew of four going in to check on the owner of the property. If the special response team could reach Thompson's body, then maybe they could determine what had happened to him and how this dangerous horde of pets got loose. At the time of the emergency, Terry and Marion owned 17 lions, 18 tigers, eight bears, three mountain lions, two wolves, and three leopards, in all, 51 major carnivores. The last three years, it just became too overwhelming, I think, financially and physically for them. The cages weren't being cleaned. The cages weren't being repaired. Gates were being broke, and, and the latches weren't being fixed. He was a hoarder of animals. Not just animals. Before the animals, there were vehicles. He was a hoarder of vehicles. That's one of the things that contributed to his being known as quite an eccentric fellow, the hoarding of things. And it got even more troublesome when it was the hoarding of wild and dangerous animals. Check the all units. There's a crew of four in a brown truck headed inside the property, inside the property. You could hear the roars and growls. If anybody up there says that they weren't scared, they're acting macho. At that time, the sheriff had said, if we were able to contain the animals, that's what we wanted to do. If anything approaches the fence, shoot to kill. I could see lions, bears, and tigers, and they were all coming towards the fence. The special response team shot and killed animals near the perimeter while slowly working their way into the property to recover Thompson's body. We could see Terry Thompson laying there. He was laying flat on his back, and his jeans pulled all the way down to his ankles. But we couldn't get to him. There was a tiger hovered over Terry, and he was, uh, he had his mouth around Terry. Um, around his head, there were several bite marks. Uh, through our scopes, I could see a pair of blue bolt cutters. I had no idea at that point what those were used for. Unable to approach the body until they had full control of the animals, the deputies turned their attention to the open cages. We could see at least two or three lionesses that were inside. We did not want to harm those animals that obviously for some reason was still inside these cages. So as we're looking through our scopes and scanning for these lions, Drake Prouty would come up on my side, reach into the door, and then attempt to shut the door and then latch lock it. Uh, so we did this through several doors successfully. And at this point, we're thinking, OK, any animals that were in there, we have safely secured them. They can't get out. We've saved some animals' lives. And at that time, we, we encountered something that I guarantee I'll never forget as long as I live. I look over, and maybe three feet away from where the door is, there's a large hole that's cut in the chain link fence. As soon as I saw that, I remember the blue bolt lock cutters that are laying beside Terry Thompson. I got immediately angry. I was very upset at that point because I knew that there was some type of either a premeditated means for the animals to get out or a setup to have someone injured from this act. All of a sudden, this lioness starts going right at us. She's not running, but she's pouncing. Just, I can I can see her paws hit the ground, and she's just pouncing, and her shoulder blades pop up out of her back, and she gets all the way to the chain link. And as soon as she gets there, we just start unloading rounds. I, I can remember shell casings hitting off my head. This lion's three feet away. I'm putting as many rounds as I can until the lion's completely motionless. We realize that we can't secure these cages. 
all these animals that we took the time to secure these doors, they're not secure. They called again to say that the cages had been cut open, the chain link was destroyed, and there was no way to contain the animals, even if they were able to coax them back into the cages. At that point, it was very clear that there was really no recourse, but I had to give, I had to give the advice to shoot to kill the animals because the situation was too dangerous for both the sheriff's department and the public surrounding in Zanesville. Anything that's not contained is to be put down. And that's to say it nicely, but we knew that we were going to shoot and kill these animals. One of the formations that we used on the Thompson farm the night of the incident was called diamond formation. If a threat would come up to our left, for instance, we can say, tiger left, tiger left, and the whole team can shift its position. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Tiger down on me. Tiger left, tiger left. When the shooting started, it just sounded like a multiple Fireworks display, boom, 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 constant. It was mind-boggling, just constant gunfire. I mean, it sounded like I was talking to somebody in Afghanistan. The Tigers were by far the most resilient. I, I remember a couple of them would do somersaults when they would hit. You know, a lot of the lions, when you hit them, uh, they would just drop to the ground. Uh, and maybe a little bit of movement, uh, but these tigers would do somersaults, and it, it seemed to me like uh, one, two somersaults, and they would cover 30 or 40 feet. Outside the farm, other officers guarded the perimeter with orders to shoot to kill any animals that got past the fence line. All the animals I shot were outside of the Thompson property. They were on their way to who knows where and to who knows what, you know, what family could have possibly encountered these. More than half of those animals have been killed. Lions, that bears, night, children. as the Zanesville story went national, public support for the sheriff's department quickly went south. Well, right now we're shooting to kill. You reached Jim County Sheriff's Office. Yes, I'd like to leave a message for your sheriff. Let please ask Sheriff what if he's ever heard of a hot damn tranquilizer gun. Hate calls. That's what we started calling them was hate calls. Can I help you? Stop shooting animals! You guys are outrageous! You're panicking and looking like apps on national TV. We couldn't do anything but answer that phone. All three of us all night long, you would hang it up and it would be lit again with people from around the world wanting to wish ill will. Do you require an IQ test for your officers? Sir, I'm not going to debate this issue with you. I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm you... going to make a bill for that, you f***ing... Not your f***ing mind! Shooting animals with live rounds, you mother... It was just accusations that we were having fun killing these animals, and we weren't having fun. It was, it was a professional police operation. It was in the back of my mind all the time. How were people, you know, going to portray me? You know, I don't want to be portrayed as some kind of monster, you know, animal killer. At one point, I was called up to deal with a big bear. I can remember aiming at that bear's head. And, um, and pulling the trigger and just dropping it. You know, and then we moved on to the next one.
By 8 p.m., the police had already killed dozens of Thompson's animals. With many large cats and bears still on the loose, detectives approached Thompson's body to do their forensics. The uh, sheriff told me to, to take charge of the investigation of the body. Here's Terry lying uh, away from the path. We could see a drag mark in the grass where a cat or cats had drugged Terry away from the blood stain. There was a, a head wound, a head gunshot wound. His hands were, were filled with a gun powder residue. Those factors combined leads us to believe that uh, this is a suicide. In the three years prior to the incident, Terry's life had spiraled out of control. The U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms conducted an investigation into Terry's gun collection, finding five machine guns and two shotguns that Terry had no license for. They quickly brought charges. He told me, he said, I'm whipped, I'm beat down. He said, they, they beat me. I've got nothing left to fight with. He said, I'm done. That's what he told me. That was before he left. Terry Thompson was convicted and served 10 months in a federal prison for possession of unregistered firearms. Terry was afraid of being locked up, confined, because he was such a free spirit that did exactly everything he wanted to do. While Terry was in prison, the heavy burden of caring for the farm and the animals fell on Marion. The farm was pretty bad shape. Marion couldn't do any more. There was just a little less of her every time I saw her. I mean, she couldn't weigh 85 pounds at one point. She was just working herself to death. I think Terry's downfall is that when he returned from prison, Marion was not at the farm waiting for him. Something had to break. That's why Marion left. Not because she truly didn't love him anymore. She just couldn't take it anymore. After 34 years of marriage, Terry's wife was no longer by his side. I don't think Terry was one to cry on anybody's shoulder and break down at all tough guy you don't show that weakness a few days later I saw him he was laughing and joking we were having a, a good conversation I'm just kidding around he I thought well he, he's coming back I think that's just when he made up his mind what he was gonna do after he cut the cages Terry went to where the cats were. His pants and underwear were pulled down and his shirts were pulled up. Had he been eaten? He had been eaten. When you say eaten, what do you mean? Well, I think I can answer that best by saying that in the wild, animals frequently eat the softest tissue first on something that they've killed. And, uh, of course, the, the softer tissue would be the private parts of both males and females. I do know that his pants were, were unbuttoned and unzipped. Uh, that leads me to believe he quite possibly, more than likely, uh, partially disrobed himself, probably knowing that the uh, cats would eat him. He wanted the animal to eat him. He said, I want to be recycled. He said, I want to be recycled. That's what he said. <laughs> I, I didn't doubt it, but I sure didn't want him to do it. Six and a half hours after the first sighting, the guns fell silent on the Thompson farm. We were still unsure of how many animals were out there, uh, but we didn't see anything moving around. Uh, so we, we made that our stopping point. To determine how many creatures were still loose, officers started counting bodies. 
We'll put them all in one spot. We'll know exactly what we're up against in the morning. We used a rope, like a noose, and we would tie it around uh, one of their legs, and then we would just slide them up the hill. All in one area, all in the proper species. Some people passed judgment that it was like a, a trophy case. It was no trophy. It just made sense. The gruesome body count continued into the next morning. Based on what they recovered, they had an idea of what might still be out there. We got to the point where we had uh, one tiger left. I said, I'm going to go up and see if we can get somebody with a tranquilizer. If we can save one of these animals, we're going to. One of the officers came up and said that they had heard a tiger in the woods down the hill from the house. My first reaction to that, when they said tiger, I thought, this is worth it. Maybe we can get this tiger. We calculated an estimated dose based on what we thought this tiger weighed. And I took one gun and two darts with me and four of the officers. As I approached it, it didn't really occur to me that I was getting closer and closer until I saw very clearly that he was about 15 feet in front of me. I'm probably 25 yards from it, and I'm not comfortable where I'm at. I had to still push a little bit further into the dense brush until I could see an opening. She's definitely got bigger cojones than I do. Then I was worried that the sound of the, of the gun would, would startle him. So I was quiet and taking off my safety and everything else. And once I saw him... I can see the side on this tiger just twitch. So I'm thinking, yeah, you know, she hit it. I thought for a minute, we're going to be OK. This is going to work. Within a second of being completely docile, this tiger just started thrashing the most horrific noises I've ever heard in my life. The most god-awful, you know, growl, roar comes out of this thing, and it just leaps. You could just see the whole area moving, all the brush just moving all at once, and you knew this tiger was about to come out. I could see that he was moving. I backed out as quickly as I could and went the other direction. The tiger went straight at her, and then the gunshots just rang. There are 48 animals that we had to put down. Those animals included one wolf, six black bears, two grizzly bears, nine male lions, eight lionesses, one baboon, three mountain lions, and 18 tigers. 16 tragic hours after the first 911 call, what became known as the Zanesville Animal Massacre was finally over. Fortunately, no members of the public had been harmed by any of the animals. The harm to the animals, however, was devastating. That night, police killed the equivalent of 1% of India's wild tiger population. There's been stories out that, you know, the Zanesville Animal Massacre, you know, and I guess when I first um, seen that headline, it kind of kind of pissed me off, you know, that they would they would uh, headline it like that. But the more I thought about it, that's uh, pretty much what it was. Just six of Terry's animals were recovered unharmed, still secure in their cages. Three leopards, two macaque monkeys, and a brown bear. Over the next few days, the Zanesville Animal Massacre dominated the headlines in America, with one question on every reporter's mind. Is there any understanding as to why he let all of these dangerous animals out before he took his own life? You know, maybe in Terry's mind, he, he thought this was the last way to get back at the government. 
Another way to look at this might be that uh, Terry looked at the animals as kids, a product of he and Marion's relationship, and perhaps when he knew he didn't have Marion anymore, he thought, I'll kill the kids to get back at Marion. But uh, there had to be a reason in Terry's mind to do what he did. We just don't know which reason it was. Stay. I think I've got past it, but, you know, some of those memories up there were, you know, nothing that, that I ever want to remember again. The sheriff told any of us if we wanted to talk to somebody, it was there, and, and I know it would be. And I, I think that I can probably just deal with it myself. Or I guess just hope that I can deal with it myself.